What's up guys, Well and Customs here, and today we're going to take a look at Optimus Prime from the Earthrise War for Cybertron series, and he looks fantastic. We're going to have a big comparison video right here, but first off, let's take a look at this guy really quickly. Alright, so taking a look at this figure up close right now, he is listed as a leader class, but he is, of course, a Voyager. We all know that. He comes with the trailer, which is fantastic, but just looking at this figure... In my opinion, he's probably the closest thing we're going to get to a Masterpiece Voyager class Optimus Prime. I'm going to say that right now. That's my statement right there. In the past, we always have these different Optimus Prime figures, either from different movies or different kind of series or different kind of um, storylines. They always have some give and take. Either they're chunky or they have a lot of kibble. This one... Minus one or two things is probably the best one we've gotten so far. And I don't, I don't think that's debatable, honestly. Now this figure has fantastic sculpting. He has great colors, articulated fingers. No kibble on him whatsoever. That's horrible to look at. Uh, overall, he just looks perfect. And in my opinion, he basically is the Voyager class Optimus Prime we have been waiting for. Now one thing I do like about the figure is the fact that he has no kibble whatsoever really. No arm kibble, no back kibble. You do have this but it's not horrible at all. It's pretty flush on the back so it won't bother you at all. Uh, I do like the fact that he has articulated fingers. I said that before which is really nice. And also I love the fact that they fixed this part on the uh, hip joint where this little section right here is actually connected to the whole hip so it moves up all the way for the articulation to go up which is really good. Usually in the past, most of the other figures, um, either they might have a flap or um, they're actually just a stationary piece right there. So it kind of gets in the way, uh, which is kind of annoying. Now one thing I don't like about this figure, and this goes on for most of all of these figures, is the ankle articulation. These figures pretty much only have ankle pivot. It goes like that, which is okay for the most part, but they don't have like toe articulation. It only goes down, which is not going to help you at all. I wish it would go up a little bit or the whole thing would go uh, hinge up and down. But other than that, I don't think anything else really bothers me that much. I do wish he came with his mace. That would have been pretty cool. But you do get a shield that pops off from the trailer, which is pretty nice. And of course, you do get his blaster right here, which is pretty nice as well. It actually folds up like this, which is pretty cool. And it has two pegs. So even though it has the traditional peg that goes in his hand, you have the opportunity to store it on the back either way you want which is pretty nice too and it also remains pretty flush on his back too not making any kibble another thing i don't like about this figure is the fact that he can't really bring his arms together so he can hold his gun i mean his gun already is kind of small to be honest but um he can't even bring his arms together to uh meet in the center right there actually the siege figure isn't that much better but you could do a better pose with it but of course you could put two guns in his hand and he looks awesome posing like that now another fun thing you can do is take this part off right here, off the trailer, and there's a peg in the back, so you can stick it back right there for him to have a backpack. Um, you can even, if you want to, make believe it's like jets too, and uh, do whatever you want him to do. Um, I know some other figures have jets in the back, like this one. So this figure actually came with a jetpack in the back, which is pretty cool, and it slides right in two pegs. So, yeah, kind of. Or maybe, yeah, hold on. Maybe like that, because you had the thrusters in the bottom look more convincing. Alright, so first comparison, of course, we will go with this one. I'm going to call him the Siege Optimus Prime right here. Fantastic looking figure, especially when he first came out. When I saw him, I thought he looked awesome. Then you get him, and then you see all the kibble. And the kibble just drove me crazy. Um, I don't mind back kibble that much, but the arm kibble on this guy is just ridiculous. Man, I'm not going to say why. Why do you have to do that for? But it's just... Why? Um, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, but overall, he is a nice looking figure. It's just the kibble can be too much for at least me. I don't know about everyone else. Uh, here's the back right here. You can see the big flap right here, which goes on top of the... Uh, truck uh, but looking at the rest of it is just hard to imagine you think this looks nice but here's another side of view of them right there 
Now, if you look at them straight on, they look very similar, very similar, and you would almost think that they're the same exact scope, but they're actually not. Everything pretty much is different except for the lower legs. You can could, you could see actually where they retooled the lower legs, um, but it is modified it a little bit. On the side right here, you can see this part is gone right here. On the back right there, they pretty much gutted it open and they covered it up over here. And also in the in inner parts, um, this is changed right there. And of course, one big difference between these two is the fact that one has a matrix, the other one does not. All right, so moving on to the comparison, you know, this is more just for fun because obviously this is a G1 looking Optimus Prime and this one is a movie Optimus Prime, but I love this one a lot. The realistic aspect of it, along with him looking like a G1 flat nose truck is just fantastic. But just looking at them, uh, probably the two best figures in my collection at least when you have a G1 aspect and a realistic aspect. Looks really good and this one honestly was a big step in my opinion because I don't, I, I could be wrong but this is the first time in my opinion where I saw that like this part right here um, is incorporated to the legs so it adds articulation to be a lot better. If I'm wrong let me know but I don't think they've done that before with the other Optimus Primes that have this kind of specific design right there. Um, other than that, there's a big difference in the, uh, a big leap at least in the kibble because this one has literally not that much kibble in the back which is fantastic. He does have some kibble on his forearm but it's on the bottom right here which is a little bit better instead of being like a big chunk on the side. So I'm a little bit okay with that. Uh, but overall it's just a great representation of a realistic versus a G1 looking Optimus Prime. Alright, for a fun size comparison right here, we have the Transformers Prime Optimus Prime. I know what everyone's going to say, the first edition is a lot better, blah blah blah. I used to have that one too, but I actually like this one a lot better because I thought the proportions were a lot better compared to the other figures in that line. And I actually sold that one. I actually like it. He's a little bit slimmer too, a little bit smaller. Um, but he matched up a lot better with Megatron, of course. But other than that, here they are side by side. I love Transformers Prime, Optimus Prime a lot, especially in the show. Uh, so this is one of my favorite characters and versions of Optimus Prime right here, side by side with a G1 aspect right there. Looks pretty good. I mean, this one suffers from a lot of back kibble, but like I said, I'm okay with back kibble. Uh, along with the arms are fine. As you can see, there's not, literally no kibble on his arms, just the way he should be from the show. All right, next up we have Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Just kidding. So this actually is a knockoff. He actually is MP10V, a Voyager class version of the Optimus Prime Masterpiece, which is, I like, a, I love this figure a lot, but he quite, not really is Voyager class, a little bit too big for my liking, of course. As you can see here, if he's a standard size Voyager class. He's just a little bit too tall. Actually, what I like about this is sometimes I might uh, shorten his legs just a little bit if he could bring it in like that much still have the articulation you just shorten him just a tiny bit but other than that he is really nice looking just not quite Voyager class for my liking but I still have him of course he honestly looks exactly like the MP10 but just a smaller version of him which fits my liking a lot um, it's almost exactly the same as like head sculpt which is really nice too uh, the body looks fantastic he's a little bit die cast here and there on his body as well. It's just a smaller version. But yeah, so I just want to show them off side by side because I love this figure a lot as well. And this one, like I said before, is probably the closest thing to a masterpiece Voyager class Optimus Prime. Here, here's one right here, but he is a KO uh, at least. But yeah, look pretty good side by side. Really nice. All right, so next up right here, we have the Galaxy Upgrade Optimus Prime or Cybertron Optimus Prime, however you want to call him. I love this figure. He looks fantastic. I actually like the newer version compared to the older one, which I used to have, uh, but this one just fits a lot better in my opinion. However, the Optimus Prime underneath all the armor can be less desirable to be honest, but this one with all the armor on, he looks so robust, beefy, humongous, intimidating. I just like the look of this guy. And here he is next to the new one. You can see the size difference is humongous. Obviously, he's so much beefier, bigger, chunkier. But if all that armor upgrades, of course, he should be. Uh, but I just want to put them side by side to show them off because these are probably going to be my favorite Optimus Primes in my collection already. So, humongous he is.
All right, next on the list, because I have so many Bay style Optimus Primes, I'm going with this one because he was a flat nose truck as well. But there he is, a Bay nose versus a classic looking G1 Optimus Prime right there. See the styling? Kind of resemblance a little bit, not really, but. Now, last but not least, we do have the Siege Megatron right here. And, you know, I like this Megatron a lot. I actually did order the BPF version, the oversized one, because I like my Megatrons look to be a little bit bigger compared to Optimus. But for now, this is a good size comparison. They pretty much are the same size, give or take, on different angles. One might be a bit taller than the other. There they are, side by side. Now, you can see that Optimus is just a tad bit if ever so taller than Megatron. However, Megatron does have the bigger body. It really depends on the head and neck size of these two figures. Um, I think side by side you probably won't really notice it half the time, especially if they're just relaxed figures standing straight up. But yeah, here they are. I like they look pretty good. I think I like how they look, but I can't wait for the oversized version. Just look at me a little bit taller, maybe uh, about that much taller which I like more. He's a tank. He's a huge tank, so it'll uh, look pretty good. And for fun, here's a nice comparison with Optimus Optimus right there. So these scale pretty good together, actually. I like how that looks. Now, articulation for this guy is pretty good. Like I said before, the only drawback to me, honestly, is the ankle joints, which have a nice pivot. The pivot does help a lot in posing him. I'll, I won't deny that. I just wish I had better ankle articulation uh, to flap forward and back. But other than that, everything is pretty standard. Improvements are pretty good though. Like I said, the improvements on the hips are really good. The butterfly joints over here, if you want to call it that, on the shoulders gives you really nice dynamic range to pose on him. He does have a swivel as well, which is nice. And on top right here, the neck does go up pretty good if you kind of angle the base part around a little bit. Uh, going down is pretty decent as well. So uh, yeah, pretty standard articulation with a couple upgrades of course. Also the articulated fingers are nice. Um, the, f the gun no matter what will fit in there because there's a groove. So it should not really fall out just like that. No matter what, but uh, it's nice to close it up anyway. Alright, vehicle mode size comparison. So here they are all transformed. I'm only doing five right now because I got really tired after doing the fifth one. Plus I cannot fit them all anyway. So here they are though, side by side. We have Transformers Prime, Siege, Earthrise, Bumblebee Movie, and we have the Galaxy upgrade right there. Overall, he looks pretty good. Um, a little bit smaller than I thought he would be, to be honest, but overall, he looks really good when it comes to the way it looks. I like the blue tinted windows. I like the chrome look. I think he overall, obviously, looks the most masterpiece looking, and you can't deny that. He just, he just does. Uh, looks fantastic looking side view of them. He looks pretty good as well. I mean they all stack up pretty nicely no matter what uh, Just comes down to your own preference which one you like better. So overall it's a view combo. He is pretty good. It rolls nicely No complaints here. Like I said a little bit smaller than I thought he would be but it all compacts pretty well Surprisingly, which is pretty nice. He of course does come with his trailer that you can store his gun underneath right there It does have a stand too for that and there's a peg hole which will slot right into the back right there, which is pretty awesome. Doesn't really turn the best, to be honest, uh, but it stays pretty straight, which is pretty nice, of course. Now for fun, will this trailer fit on other ones? Let's see. So here is the Bomo B1. They do all have pegs in the back. Uh, that fits pretty, pretty good, actually. So Optimus does have his trailer, just like at the end of the movie of Bumblebee, him rolling down. That is pretty nice and cool to see right there. It looks pretty leveled. No problems right there at all. Alright, next up would be the Siege one. There is a peg right here, but it's kind of far forward. But it works. It looks pretty good too. It looks pretty leveled. I think you can bring in a little bit more. And that looks pretty nice. And now here is the Transformers Prime version. Will it fit? Oh yeah, actually this fits pretty good and it swings really nicely actually, which I like a lot. Back wheel does not quite catch that much, a little bit, but uh, overall it looks pretty good. Alright, so size wise, compared to the Galaxy Upgrade Optimus, here he is 
Um, they're both pretty long actually, and I'll give yeah, pretty much the same thing, give or take. Uh, not a big difference in length, but in height, um, definitely this one's a little bit taller, of course. And as you can see here, like I showed before, you can really add some weapons inside of the trailer to uh, beef up his arsenal and still will close up pretty nicely. Just had to uh, adjust everything in there properly. But everything's pretty good. Alright guys, so that's about it. Thank you for watching. Like I said before, he is, in my opinion, the closest thing we're going to get to a Masterpiece Optimus Prime in the Voyager class scale. Not quite perfect, but definitely right there. Um, he is complete with the trailer. Posing him is awesome. He looks fantastic. And in my opinion, of all the different Optimus Primes we've gotten in the Voyager class, he is the be-all, end-all. And that's about it guys, thank you for watching. Like always, comment, criticize, subscribe, do whatever you want to pay attention. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Peace!